Okay. So we need to find the inverse sine of 5 over 13, right? And now, guys, remember, we were talking about sine was your y-coordinate, right, of your unit circle because it was y1. Well, now our radius, um, we don't have, this is not on the unit circle. 5 over 13 is not going to be a point on the unit circle. So we need to remember that sine of an angle theta is equal to y over r, right? And remember, for the unit circle, our r was 1. That's why we just did the y-coordinate. But now, when we have a point that's not going to be on the unit circle, we have to include 13 as our radius or as our hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do is, as I create this triangle, I know that my hypotenuse is going to be 13. So I write 5, of course. Okay? So I have two possible triangles I could have, right? Both of these have a hypotenuse of 13, and they both have a, a y value of 5, right? Mm -hmm. I could say these are both sine, sine of 5 over 13. But remember, we were talking about the restrictions. The restriction of sine is between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, or between negative 90 and 90 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So therefore, yes? How do you know which ones are the hypotenuse? Like, because it's arc sine? Like, how did you know 13 was the hypotenuse? Can you just say sine is that? Well, remember, r represents our hypotenuse, or if you want to go back a little bit to other trade, you can also do, remember, it's always the opposite over hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. So you just substitute sine in for cosine or arc sine? No, I, well, I haven't finished it yet. Oh, okay. But just finding the inverse, I'm going to use my inverse sine to go ahead and determine what my triangle is. So okay. what the reason why we have the inverse sign is giving us a restriction that we have to only use this triangle because that is within our constraints. Oh, okay. All right, so I that's see. why we use the inverse sign so I can say, hey, I can't use this triangle. Otherwise, we'd have two answers, right? We wouldn't know which one to pick. So since I'm using inverse sign, I'm going to be able to eliminate this triangle, and I can use now Pythagorean theorem to solve for this. So I have 13 squared, which is 169, equals 25, plus b squared, minus 25. Yeah, I know it's going to be 12 squared, but I'm just going to show the work just so I don't make sure everybody understands. So though, therefore, I have my triangle. Now I've determined what my, my angle is for um, my x value. So then it finds, says, find the cosine of this. Well, cosine, right, of your angle, cosine of this is going to be your adjacent over your hypotenuse, or your x over your r. So the final value for this is just going to be 12 over 13. Make sense, Cameron, you had a question? Yeah, I was, Halsey asked earlier about how you know which one's the hypotenuse then, and mm -hmm. how you can Just remember that when you're dealing with sine, that is your opposite over your hypotenuse. If you're dealing with cosine, remember cosine was your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Um, and I mean, we're just gonna be working. We're gonna be working more with it again today, just practicing. But um, just remember, when you're dealing with your sine or your cosine function, those you're gonna be dealing with either your opposite over your hypotenuse or your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. 